Hey everyone, welcome to another quick tip. Today I'm gonna to show how to do moving averages in Spotfire using custom expressions and axis expressions. Now before I jump into that, I wanted to mention a great member of our community, Julie Sebi. Now she has an amazing blog where she puts out new blogs every week. Um, it's on the bigmountainanalytics.com. You'll see this in the analytics corner. She has an eight part series on expressions themselves. I've been using expressions in Spotfire for many years and I learned a lot of new things by just reading through her, her eight part series. So I'd recommend going to bigmountainanalytics.com, checking out this blog. I'd also recommend going to uh, Julie Sebi on LinkedIn and giving her a follow. That way you can get an update whenever she puts out a new blog post. Again, that's it's almost every week she's putting out a new blog post on Spotfire. Now for today's example, I'm gonna use the COVID-19 starter template. You can find this on the community. There's a free download to the starter template and that grabs the latest Johns Hopkins COVID-19 data. It cleans it, preps it, and makes it available for you to use in your own COVID-19 analysis. So here in the starter template I have installed the tear packages that I need I've trusted the data function I've hit refresh data which runs that data function pulls that latest Johns Hopkins data in for me it's all in this DXP I'm gonna go ahead and create a new page here and I'm gonna start from visualizations and I'm gonna create a combo chart now with this combo chart it's using the world countries data table and so that has all the cases and deaths and recoveries on the world country level on the country level here um, and I'm gonna make this a date in the x-axis and I'm going to use this as um, a year, month, and day of month. So here we see all of the cumulative cases. Now I want to do this over the new cases, not just the cumulative cases. So I'll create a calculated column. I'm going to use this expression and this takes the cases that are in the each individual row and it subtracts it from another value. This other value it's going to subtract it from is going to be the total cases intersected with the country and the previous date. And what that means is it's going to go ahead and group together all of the previous dates, all of the and group it by country as well. So we have an intersection of previous dates and country, and then it's going to sum the cases over that. So the total cases per country over all the previous dates, and then subtract the current cases from that, and that will actually give me the new cases here. And let's go ahead and change this to new cases. So here we see the new cases per day uh, across the world. This is for all the countries, and you can see all of these kind of ups and downs, these spikes. We've seen there's been a lot of reporting inconsistencies with uh, how COVID cases are reported around the world. Uh, some countries don't report as much on the weekend, so we see some dips there. Um, some are reporting big batches, and so we want to do a moving average and kind of uh, smooth this out. What I'm going to do is actually add the new cases again, but for my aggregation here, I'm going to choose the moving average pre-built aggregation. And now we see this here, um, this moving average. I'm going to go ahead and make this a line. Now we see here that this line is way above all the other values, and that's because this aggregation is actually set to average. We want this to be a sum. So the total new cases per day, let's go ahead and make this uh, a different color. We'll make this uh, blue, we'll make this one red. So in the way that this is working, this moving average, is it's actually looking at the x-axis here. I have this looking at whatever I have on the x-axis, and it's looking over an interval size that's 10, in, that's 10 intervals. So right now I have this interval on days, individual days. If I move this down to let's say seven, that's gonna be seven day interval, okay? And that means this is a weekly moving average, this red line that's moving across. Now if I change my x-axis to then be instead months, then you'll see this kind of disappeared and that's because there's not seven months. So I can go here and I can change this down to let's say um, you know three or two months, a two month moving average. Uh, a one month moving average, which is just gonna be the average along here. It's not really a moving average at that point. But the point is that this interval is based off of whatever you have on the X axis. And we wanna see this, um, I think this is most useful to see at the daily level. Um, so how can we make this a little more dynamic for our users that are maybe using this on the web and can't change these configurations? I'm gonna create a new calculated column that gives me a document property that I can move around. To do this, I first need to go ahead and create a document property so I'll go to file document properties and I'm gonna create a property that's just called n days and that's gonna be the number of days and that is gonna be an integer value and I'll just create this as let's say a 5 as a default value and next I want to add a calculated column so go to data 
add calculated column. And in this data table in world countries, I already have an expression that I've built here, which is gonna be the average of the new cases. And that's gonna be over the intersection of the country and then the, a, a number of days. So this is gonna be over a few periods. And the way periods work is it's looking at the rows in your data table and it's looking at each individual row as a, a period and which row does it or which column is that defined by it's defined by date so it's going to look at the last seven days that are in the date column instead of making this fixed at seven i want to use that document property so this is parameterizable this is uh, adjustable so i'll go into n days here and i'll insert this property so now this is going to be the last five days because five is that value and it's going to be over this date column. And I'll be able to change this in a second, which I'll show you, but for now, let's just call this moving average. Now, this is going over the five day moving average. That's a document property we had set. So let's go ahead and make this adjustable. I'm gonna create a text area. And here I am going to edit this and I'm gonna create a property control, which is in this text, this little checkbox icon. And I'm gonna just do a slider here and I'm gonna tie this to my end days document property. And I want this to go, I'll just leave this at one to 10 as a numerical range and it'll increment by whole numbers. It'll increment by one and I'll save this. And now we have this slider, so this is five days. If I move this down to three days, you'll see that this green line has now changed. If I move it up to seven days, it's gonna be right on top of that red line because those are both by seven days. So now this is, uh, a way I can change this and see the moving average uh, for however I'd like, and this is what someone in the consumer mode can use. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're gonna have new videos coming out each week, and we hope you continue to join us. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.